Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about electrochemical cell potentials. Okay, These are quantities that are defined at equilibrium for oxidation reduction reactions. And we're going to quantify something called the cell potential, and then we're going to use that to calculate the Gibbs free energy at equilibrium. And from that we can even calculate the equilibrium constant. So this video is going to be designed to show you how to do that. Alright, so I'm going to want to calculate the cell potential, the free energy change, and the equilibrium constant for the given reaction below. The reaction of ethanol and NAD going to acetaldehyde and NADH. Now in general, the equation for the cell potential, if I want to calculate it, is given up here. And in general, this table right here is given as reductions. These are only reduction reactions. So what I need to do is, in this equation, I need to find the species being reduced and find the half reaction that goes to that and find the cell potential that goes with that half reaction. All right. Now one thing to go ahead and memorize is any time you're going from NAD to NADH, that's a reduction. If you're going from FAD to FADH2, that's a reduction. Um, things like that. In this case, I notice that NAD going to NADH is part of the reaction. That's the reduction. So let's see if we can find that here. And it turns out I see it right here. This right here is NAD going to NADH, and it turns out that that cell potential is negative 0 0.320. Okay, so if I want to calculate the standard cell potential, I need to find the, re the reduction potential for NAD to NADH. That's just given straight in the table. Negative 0 0.320 volts. Now I'm going to subtract off the oxidation potential for the oxidation reaction. Now the oxidation, by definition, has to be the other species, ethanol to acetaldehyde. Now notice, I have something that resembles this. I have acetaldehyde going to ethanol except that's also a reduction because this table is only for reductions. But I want the oxidation direction, ethanol to acetaldehyde, not the reverse. Because this is a reduction potential given as negative 0.197 volts, if I want the oxidation, which is just the reverse reaction, it turns out all I do is flip the sign of this to positive 0.197 volts. Okay, so minus the cell potential for the oxidation half reaction, ethanol to acetaldehyde. I'm going to use the negative of this, which turns out it's negative minus 0 0.197 volts. This can be rewritten as negative 0 0.320 volts and then plus 0 0.197 volts. Let me go ahead and run that in the calculator. Negative point 320 volts and then plus 0.197 volts. It turns out that the standard cell potential is zero and it's negative 0 0.123 volts. Okay, that's my cell potential. Now that I have that, I can find the standard free energy. So it turns out that the standard free energy is equal to negative n, which is the number of electrons being transferred in the reaction times the Faraday constant times the standard cell potential. So let's see if we can figure out what the free energy is. Minus, and how many electrons are transferred here? Well, NAD is able to transfer two electrons, and two electrons are being transferred from ethanol, okay, making acetaldehyde, so this is a two electron process. All right, so this is gonna be negative. N is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction. Generally, when you're dealing with NAD, it's automatically two. Okay, and that turns out it's the case here. So 2 is the number of electrons. F is the Faraday constant. It turns out this is 96,485, and the units are joules per mole volt. And the cell potential that I found was negative 0 0.123 volts. Now, notice units are going to cancel to give me the units I want, and those happen to be joules per mole. Okay, so let me go ahead and multiply this out, and we'll figure out what the standard free energy change is. So it's going to be negative 0.123 times 96,485 times negative 2, and it turns out that this free energy is going to be 2 
23,735 joules per mole. And we're going to say this is going to be about 23.7 kilojoules per mole. So that's the standard free energy change for this reaction. Okay. The other thing I can do is I can calculate the equilibrium constant. If I remember that the standard free energy change is equal to minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. And I won't go into the sort of derivation of how you get this, but if you exponentiate both sides, you get the expression KEQ, the equilibrium constant, is equal to exponential of minus delta G standard over RT. Now I'm going to choose two things here. I'm going to choose the temperature as being, let's just say it's 300 Kelvin, and the gas constant I want to use is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And now I'm going to figure out what this is. So I just found, I just found the delta G in joules per mole. I'm going to divide that by 8.314, and then I'm going to divide that by 300, and then I'm going to make sure to take the negative of it. Okay, so times minus 1, and now I'm going to take exponential of that. And it turns out that the equilibrium constant for this is going to be about 7.36 times 10 to the minus fifth. And that answer is going to be unitless. Equilibrium constants are unitless. So that's my equilibrium constant. So this is one problem where we can take cell potential and find the standard Gibbs free energy and then also equilibrium constant from that. We're going to do a few more problems with this using our table up here of biochemical cell potentials. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.